Secretary Gates, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your many, many decades of distinguished service to our nation and also to, to my home state of Texas. It's very good to see you. Thank you. I, I want to start by, by talking with you about morale in the military, which is a, a, a concern that, that troubles me greatly. Uh, the Military Times did a survey in 2009. <laughs> they asked soldiers whether the overall quality of life is good or excellent. And in 2009, 91% of soldiers said yes. In 2014, that number had dropped from 91% to 56%. Likewise, they asked whether senior military leadership had their best interest in heart. In 2009, 53% of soldiers agreed with that statement. In 2014, that number dro dropped in half to roughly 27 percent. Do you share my concerns about declining morale in the military? And, and, and if so, what do you see uh, as, as the cause of these challenges? I don't have any statistics, but, but I do have the sense that, that uh, there, there is a morale problem. And I think it is, <clears throat> I think it's due to several things. Uh, first of all, I, I think it is due to uh, the substantial and growing cutbacks in the number of men and women in the military. So, so people in the military now are less uh, confident that they will be allowed to remain in the military, that in the force reductions they will be turned out, uh, in essence be fired, uh, and particularly for uh, those who have some years in and probably have families, uh, concerns about what they will do if, uh, because of forced downsizing, they end up uh, out in the civilian world again. I think that there's a morale problem that derives from um, a lot of the budgetary uncertainty in the sense that uh, as I suggested earlier, people who join the military to fly airplanes, sail on ships, or drive tanks are finding they don't have the same opportunities to do that anymore. That's the stuff that made it fun and, and that was one of the things that encouraged them to stay. So I think that these and, and the budgetary uncertainties and so on are all, are all part of a, of a challenge for our young men and women in uniform. And, and then the final one that I mentioned just a few minutes ago, and that is you go, particularly the ground forces, you go from um, mostly young men who have been out in Iraq and Afghanistan and on these deployments, they have this great sense of camaraderie and brotherhood with their uh, fellow soldiers and Marines. They've given, been given a lot of uh, opportunity to operate independently and in an entrepreneurial way and be innovative and so on. And they're being, being brought back and put in cubicles and asked to do PowerPoints. So I think all those things together probably are having a real impact on morale. You know, in my view, another factor that is contributing in addition to, to everyone you just discussed is a, having a commander in chief that fails to set clear objectives, and in particular, an objective of winning clearly and decisively military conflicts in which we're engaged. Uh, in your book, Duty, uh, you stated that, that President Obama didn't appear to believe that his own strategy for Afghanistan and the Middle East would work. Uh, is that still a concern you share? Well, I, what, I, what I wrote about and what concerned me was that my belief that if, if a commander-in-chief or a secretary of defense is going to send a young man or a young woman into harm's way, uh, they need to be able to explain to that per, uh, young person in uniform why that, mission is, why that mission is important, why the cause is noble and just, why their sacrifice is uh, worthwhile. And, and that was, um, I think, the easiest way to put it, that was not a speech I heard the President give. No, sadly, it was, it was not. Um, one, one final question. Um, 
the budget request that you proposed in fiscal year 2012 called for $615 billion in the base budget for fiscal year 2016. Uh, that was the last Pentagon budget that was directly derived from the threats we face. By any measure, the world, I believe, has become much more dangerous today than it was in 2012. Uh, do you agree with that assessment, and, and do you view that, that baseline of 615 as a, 615 billion as a reasonable baseline given the growing threats in the world? I would say I've been out of out of this for four years, but I would say that uh, certainly the the number of challenges that we face uh, in a variety of places in the world are more complex and more difficult than when I put together that FY12 budget. I have seen <clears throat> several assessments by analytical groups that I respect uh, that are nonpartisan that basically say that the Congress and the administration uh, should go back to that FY12 budget as the base for going forward. And, and I, I respect the views of those who say that, and I, I therefore think that that probably would be a good idea. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Mm -hmm.